Good evening. This is CTV News for Thursday, January 2nd, 2014. I'm Denise Douglas. And I'm Patricia Ballone. Glad to have you with us tonight. Well, Prince George saw a historic drop in crime in 2013. Police and elected officials announced the latest crime numbers at a press conference earlier today. They say the data shows Prince George's is a safe place to live as other local jurisdictions. Rochelle Metzger has the details and reaction from residents. Residents in Prince George's are safer than they've ever been in the county's history, and officials say the proof is in the numbers, releasing 2013 crime statistics today. They say overall crime in the county is down 12 percent from 2012. The homicide rate is down 13 percent. This as police investigate two New Year's Day homicides, the very first of 2014 here on Karen Elaine Drive in New Carrollton. Police say the first killing of 2014 occurred around 4.30 a.m. Wednesday at an apartment complex in the 5500 block of Karen Elaine Drive. The victim, a 26-year-old man, was shot to death. Despite the violent start to the new year, officials say the county's homicide rate is the lowest it's been in decades, dropping nearly 40 percent over the last three years. We have had a laser-like focus on these communities. It has gone beyond just excellent policing. We have leveraged every resource of our government and we have taken a holistic approach. Announcing new crime numbers today, Police Chief Mark McGall attributes the decline to improved community relations and a restructured department. It put uh, investigators north, south and central to look at a bigger picture to be able to see patterns and, and uh, trends quicker and to move the appropriate resources to put an end to those issues quicker. A county long defined by crime, leaders hope record low numbers two years in a row will help change the perception that the county is less safe than its neighbors. But residents tell us they don't feel a change. Cecilia Livingston has lived in Bowie since the mid-90s and says she still has her concerns. There's still petty clown in our neighborhood. You know, there's people breaking into cars, breaking into homes. I mean, it's not just homicides. You know, overall, um, you can see some improvement, but, you know, it's, it's not the, the greatest of all, but, but it's not the worst either. As for the homicide here on Karen Elaine Drive, investigators are following up on some strong leads, but they have not yet made an arrest. In New Carrollton, Rochelle Metzger, CTV News. And forcible rape is one area that did see an increase last year. First and second degree rapes were up 40 percent in 2013. Chief McGaw says the department is looking at that problem closely, particularly the role alcohol plays. He says a community education program is one way officials are trying to address the issue. Well, more on the crime front, a New Year's Day argument in Clinton ended with one man dead and the suspect under arrest. Police say 38-year-old DeJuan Hunter went to a home on Goldfield Place to visit family. While he was there, Hunter got into a confrontation with his mother's fiancé, Raymond Quattlebaum. Things escalated, and Hunter allegedly shot the 52-year-old and ran from the residence. Hunter was taken into custody this morning. He has been charged with murder. State lawmakers head back to Annapolis next week for the start of 2014 Maryland General Assembly session. CTV caught up with several local leaders today to find out what issues are on their legislative agendas. Delegates Doyle Neiman and Barbara Frush say after Prince George's and Montgomery counties passed bills to boost the minimum wage, there seems to be growing support for a statewide increase. Maryland currently follows the federal minimum wage of $7.25 per hour, but both legislators say they could see it being bumped up to at least $10. I think it's very likely. Uh, it's a priority of uh, almost everybody in leadership. So I think we'll do something. may not be quite at the $11.50 level of the county, but uh, it'll be significantly better than what we now have. I think it has a, a, a relatively good chance of passing. Everyone that I've talked to seems to feel it's the right thing to do. You know, the, the, the counties are doing it. It's time for this state to step up to the plate. And the 2014 legislative session kicks off on Wednesday, January 8th. 
Well, Maryland coaches and doctors once again are listed as the highest paid state employees, according to the Baltimore Sun. Terps football coach Randy Edsel and basketball coach Mark Turgeon each made more than $2 million in 2012. Top paid University of Maryland doctors made nearly 800000 The news comes as Maryland politicians seek pay increases. Governor Martin O'Malley and General Assembly lawmakers could receive a hike under a couple of pending proposals by two separate independent commissions. The proposals would increase the governor's salary from $150,000 to $180,000. Part-time legislators would see their pay jump to $50,000. In case you haven't heard, the big three, cold weather, high winds, and snow are on the way. But fear not, the Prince George's uh, Department of Public Works is ready. Crews will be dispatched for road salting along with ice and snow removal. To make cleanup easier, motorists are being asked to park on even-numbered sides of the streets in residential areas. Also, don't forget to shovel your driveways and sidewalks. Got that, Patty? <laughs> I will be. Well, you are watching CTV News. I'm Patricia Ballone. And I'm Denise Douglas.